well. Uh, welcome to my channel if you've not been here before. Uh, this is where I talk about Divine Process, aka Twin Flame Process, and um, what I'm receiving through my guidance. My guides are Pleiadian guides, so it's high consciousness basically, and what they want us to know at this time about what is going on energetically. So I put a post out the other day, which was a written post, where I talked about um, how we're in a completion process. They've been talking about completion process since the beginning of 2018. Um, completion process started 1st of November 2018, although they talked about it before. Uh, it hadn't really, it didn't really kick in until then. Um, that was about bringing us further into our own true selves, so uh, more in alignment with our connection to Source, basically, which we all are. We all are Source, so uh, that is the truth, right? And that was bringing us into that alignment with our own truth um, and the completion of that process, which has been going on, uh, the ascension process, basically whenever that started for you. For me, it was really um, when it was uh, brought in with a, an acknowledgement of what it was, was 2012. And it was also the start of my reunion at 2012 with my twin flame. The separation started in 2007, actually 2006 physically. Um, and then the reunion process began in 2012 when I was guided to go back and um, see him. So uh, that's a longer story, that's a different story. So <laughs> all the signs and synchronicities started then, really, with the reunion, I guess. Uh, and it started to like multiply, you know, the process started to kick in more and more. So um, uh, basically integrating everything that I would need for that physical reunion to take place. So this is um, this completion process that's due to end on the 1st of November is about our own authentic truth and connection to source. So it's when we're returned to source basically. So it's like enlightenment, which is, uh, or samadhi, they like to call it the yogis, which is basically uh, awareness of soul within a hu your human being. So it's... Um, understanding that uh, you know you create your own reality that this is a matrix that we live in that the third dimension is only real um, as a, a reflection of your vibration basically so it's like that's how you create what you want which is the ultimate truth um, and with that comes that completion comes like a release basically of all fear which is really again what's leaving on the 1st of November a completion of the process of moving away from the fearful uh, fear and existing within a structure of fear and where you you know fear is really where you believe what you see right so you're going to believe what's in your bank account to be the truth you're going to believe what is uh, the um, the state of your life to be the truth so it's like uh, that old the all the old beliefs of like well my life is shit so I'm only ever going to have a shit life uh, because the truth is you create your own life through your vibrations. So you, you, what you want to believe is what you create. So if you want to believe you're going to have a wonderful life, you'll create a wonderful life. So this is the completion of that, right? Move away from the fear. Um, within this completion, there's a lot of different completion processes going on because nothing is just one note. Uh, everything is a combination of um, the divine plan, basically is a combination of processes that take you into that truth and beyond that truth where you start to work from that truth and live from that truth uh, there's multiple processes that need to be completed we've completed karmic processes now within the feminine energy framework so that is from the feminine perspective so that's for the feminines that are incarnated working to create uh, the template for union, which is a template of unconditional love and freedom, non-judgment. Um, and it has to be created within the feminine before it can be activated for the, the two energies to uh, have that in incorporated into a physical union. So um, both, uh, both energies, both twins, release karma, but um, the masculine energy does everything uh, unconsciously until they're fully awakened, whereas the feminine is awakened and conscious of the process. So that's the difference, really. So with the feminine, the reason that I come on YouTube and I 
give do readings and stuff like that is because um, the feminine is aware of the process they're going through and they can therefore shift themselves by um, acknowledging because uh, all all shifts are about awareness you shift when you come into awareness of something from the very very basic shifts from like understanding that you might be codependent as soon as you understand it's like hitting a nail on the head right and the nail goes in so as soon as you understand that you're codependent if you have been codependent you come into awareness of that before you activate a shift around it so you're, it's always awareness that is a shift and activates a shift and it's like you hit the nail on the head like bingo wow oh my god I get it and the nail goes in and you shift right so um, it's all about wisdom enlightenment truth growth self growth self understanding being the witness to yourself the witness to the self first of all then the witness to the process of becoming the self right so it's all these shifts that we go through part of this is karmic shifting so it's it's shifting in relation to other people and your relationship with other people and this again from the very basic to the more advanced so the basic would be your family unit and what is there that you need clarity around that's going to release you from a program of fear see how it works so it's like programs within programs within programs and shifts within shifts within shifts because to shift out of fear completely you have to shift out of fear in relation to all the people around you starting with the most basic which is the closest to you which is a family unit so in what way were you prevented from flourishing into your true soul self your uh, working in with connection to your own source self in the physical framework of the third dimension how were you in whatever way debilitated from that by in the most basic way by your parents now it might only be a little fraction 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 for some people and for some people it might be a vast amount some people 99% taken away from their true source self through like really strict religious upbringings and punishment and uh, you know um, no love a state of no love un no unconditional love from the parents some people minor 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 little bits with really like open-hearted open minded parents who let them be whoever they are and they flourish you know immediately and and grow because growth self growth you know is one of the things that is um that we're here for you know and it should be a beautiful thing as well it's a beautiful thing self growth it's not a, some kind of like healing like negative thing it's like a flourishing wonderful amazing thing because when you self growth you know if when you're um is uh, not inhibited is allowing you to grow into your full vibration your true connection to source so therefore you're going to manifest even more wonderful things into your life so basically um, it's all processes in, within processes and then uh, what's happening right now at this full moon is that uh, and it's the 10th of the 10th and it's the 11th of the 10th then it's the full moon basically um, and the full moon, I would say, 12th, 13th, 14th, where the 14th is, um, is diminishing. So it's like, it's really profound portal right now. And it's for the masculine energy. The full moons are always for the masculine energy because they shift unconsciously. So they shift in relation to the feminine shifting, basically. So every time you shift and you release some programming and you move out of fear and you up level in consciousness and you become more attached to your soul self and more working from your soul self your source self every time you do that they shift and um, so that's why the information is put out by people so that it helps people shift so you're actually through this process constantly shifting and activating yourself and um, through your awareness of what's going on and how you can incorporate more of your true self, your true authentic source self into your human experience, basically. And every time you bring a little bit more of that in and let a bit, little bit more of the fear go around doing that and what is possible from doing that, you uh, help the masculine shift um, without them being aware of the, the fact that they're shifting. So it's like your shifting gives them light bulb moments of awareness where they suddenly come to an... Um, an understanding within themselves which brings them more into alignment with their true source self as well so this is how you bring them into their truth it's not from because I'm just remembering when I've done a reading for someone and they thought it was like going out there and telling their twin what to do with their life but it's not 
that it does it's not that it's not from a third dimensional perspective they shift in relation to you shifting and you becoming more wise and you up leveling they will automatically do that so um this full moon what we've got now because it's like an awareness portal for them as all moons full moons and new moons actually are about the masculine shifting is um assisting them in that shift so it's not like i say about you going out of your uh reaching outwards outside of your experience um energetically and trying to help them do something so it's not about texting or calling or emailing or anything like that or pointing out anything to them because that is judgment it's all judgment and it's all negative what doesn't matter what it is it's all negative because it's all third dimensional and third dimensional is lower dimension therefore it's negative right so what it's about now is it is about um, you incorporating more of your understanding of your energetic responsibility to yourself your existence your reason for existing and your um, full understanding of what is available from you focusing on that because there's a lot available to you if you focus on your vibration and achieving non-resistance within your vibration is what makes everything available including the physical union so um, that's what really what it's about for the feminine at this time through this portal so um, that's what I've come to talk about right is how you can shift your awareness around your vibration maybe a little bit more than you've shifted before maybe seeing something in there that you've not acknowledged before or you haven't realized is part of your vibration or in a way that it doesn't just accessing more of this ability to shift resistance from the vibration basically so um what my guides are talking about at this time right is the basic things they come with every full moon so just remembering the basics of what to do on a full moon so it's really about uh downtime energe uh, physically i say phys energetic i mean physically you know being physically energetic so downtime physically so it's like um i would say if you can for these days right starting now today is thursday uh is to like take time out so you could um in whatever way and remember right your physical reality is created through your vibration so you've got to let go of the fear that your physical action is gonna make things better for you it isn't your vibration makes things better for you so this means allowing yourself to take time out in the form of sick days right um, you, your energetic process is the most important thing it's what you're here for so it's about putting that making that priority right so if you if you work full time and you've got an opportunity now to take some time off take it off maybe holiday or a sick day you know a couple of days it's Thursday tomorrow take it off and um, if you've got um, kids responsibilities is there anyone can look after your kids for you could they go to granny's or granddad's for the weekend or the ex-husbands or whatever is that possible um, you know whatever way is that if you're self-employed please put your work down stop your work for a few days it's not going to kill you in fact it's going to increase your vibration it's going to make your life better so do that as well um, chores tasks around the house put it off you can do it after the weekend nothing is that urgent that it needs to be done right now right and in fact you're going to fix up whatever it is in the house by not doing it as I will explain shortly as well rather than doing it so uh, things like that get your shopping in batten down the hatches get yourself some snacks some chocolates whatever it is you like to eat treat yourself to what it is you like to eat a glass of champagne they just said do you like a glass of Prosecco champagne whatever don't have anything that boils you on the inside like carver <laughs> if it tastes bad going down it's not gonna it's gonna heat up your insides and cook them is what I always think so <laughs> that's my that's my ego perspective but if it tastes nice have it if you like it have it right so um 
that kind of thing. Nice food to eat, get some nice movies downloaded, get your blankets out on the sofa, um, turn off your phone, turn off your doorbell if you can do, lock your doors, draw your shutters, uh, put a sign on the door saying I'm not available. Whatever you need to do, right? It's all about time out, taking time out for you, luxuriating yourself, warm baths, hot water bottles, comfy clothes. Um, it's the time for your feminine relaxation. So it's like thinking like when you have a period, you know, run up to the period, those few days, it's that kind of thing. Um, so it's all about comfort, right? And, and enjoying and enjoying yourself, but in a downtime, like down way, you know, not in a light, a light a going out and um, sky jumping kind of way. So. That's the basics, right? That's with every full moon, but even much more with this one because this is a massive shift for the masculine energy at this point. The full moon is in Aries. The Aries is a start point. It's a beginning. It's a masculine energy. It's the Ace of Wands. It's potential. It's a light bulb moment for them. It is an action moment for them. Um, and it is you're facilitating that by what you do energetically. So you have to do the opposite of that, basically. So if you think, if you look at it that way as well, that tells you what to do, right? So it's like no action because you, their action is not facilitated by your action. Their action is facilitated by your in, your introspection almost. Um, but So talking about that as well, it's like on top of the light, battening down the hatches and get yourself ready for just like a weekend of trying to do nothing as much, as little as you possibly can, you know, and... Um, is uh, how to release resistance, right? Because that's what I said I was going to talk about. So what happens is, and that's why it's not really introspection, because we are completing a process, right, that leads us out of fear and into an enlightened state. An enlightened state, as I said before, is a lightness of being. So it's operating from pure potential. Pure potential only operates from freedom, joy, and happiness. So it's about the um, operating from a from a energy, a vibration of pure potential, which is pure happiness and joy. And this this state of being comes from feeling no, through a state of no resistance. And this is what your vibration is needs to be about. All right, so. Um, and just to like say about this in a, a more overall way, right? Because the reason people don't un, don't get manifestation and it doesn't work for them is because they have they are not in a state of non-resistance, and um, it, it's it is simple, right? But it's it's simple, but it's it's precise. Okay, so it's kind of like um, when you put out a, a request for a manifestation and you ask for something, and then you have to allow it. So that's the process, right? You ask, and then you allow. And the asking is simple, right? Because you are uh, you merely need to ask for it. So um, that's there's all the, re the ways to do that. Visualization, creative visualization, imagining it, daydreaming it, all this kind of stuff. And it doesn't, for little things, it's literally like you could just have a fleeting thought in the next minute the non-resistance will bring it to you but for the bigger things um to harness you need to harness more non-resistance so what happens is people will put a request out and for a start it's like it, with a little thing you don't even know you're doing it half the time so you could just know you, you, there's something that you want and uh it'll just come to you like i'm talking about little things like the right uh oh, I don't know, pair of shoes, or the right colour lipstick, or the right um, loaf of bread even, you know, because everything comes to you through your vibration, <laughs> so and a lot of it you don't even know you're doing it, it's like, I want that, and it is, but um, for, for like the bigger things, so say it was like a house, or a car, or a person, or something like that, what happens is people ask for it, and as soon as they ask for it, they don't believe it, so therefore they've got a load of resistance straight away because they don't even know they're manifesting the small things so there's no belief there, right? So first of all, you've got to understand all the small things that are in your life, you manifest them all. From the bugs that come in, 
into the house, right, that you draw to you through your negative thoughts, because they're a manifestation of your negativity, if you don't like the look of them, they are, uh, to like the, the loaf of bread that you buy at the shop that tastes good, everything you manifest through your vibration, right, through little moments of non-resistance or resistance, but people don't realise that, so there's no belief around the fact that they do that, so if you can believe that about those things, right, know that, then you're also going to see that you manifest the bigger things into your life through a state of non-resistance, but you're going to require not more non-resistance to manifest those big things, for, for a start where you ask, you've got to believe you're going to get it, because if not, you're immediately in resistance. A non-belief feels like a sliding downhill, right? It feels like negativity. It feels like doubt. It feels like constriction within the physical body. It feels like a tight stomach, a tight throat, a tight forehead, a furrowed brow. Um, it feels like tense muscles in the shoulders, in the back of the neck. You've got to understand the feeling that comes with non-belief. And then you can understand that when you're feeling like that physically, you're in non-belief. Right, resistance feels like complete relaxation, like the moment when you wake up in the morning or when you're actually asleep, when your body's completely relaxed and floppy like a rag doll, is non-resistance. Do you see what I mean? So the, the, the reason you meditate is you get into a state of non-resistance. People think it's around the mind. They think they meditate and then you look at them, they've got a furrowed brow because they're concentrating really, really hard. Meditation is when you're in a state of flow, and it can be in anything that you're doing at any time of the day. If you're in a state of flow, you're in a meditative state. It means you're non-resistance to whatever isn't you could perceive as not being right. You're in non-resistance to any negativity. And how you get into that is through relaxing, right, and being in a state of flow and connecting into your source. That's how you connect to your source. Relaxation, state of flow. So, um... Do you understand that, right? So it's like when you meditate, what you're actually looking for in the meditation is a state of non-resistance, right? So you're not looking for anything there apart from nothingness. And you get that through just to start with noticing the thoughts that come in and then letting them go and 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 letting them go. And, them go. and notice how your physical body feels. Have you got tension in your shoulders? Have you got tension in the back of your neck? Are you frowning? Let it go. Let it go in the physical body. And the combination of the two things, you're going to find that you stink into a state of non-resistance until at some point, eventually, you'll black out. And um, not every time, but that can happen. And you actually exit your physical body, out-of-body experience. Massages are very, very good for non-resistance. You can have a massage and you can go into out-of-body out state where you're completely connected to source and you can witness yourself and you're looking down at yourself being massaged. I've had that happen to me before. It's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Um, but then, of course, I'm always very disappointed when I have a massage and it doesn't lead to that. So there is contrast there as well. <laughs> right, so um, uh, non-resistance, right? Now, um, this thing is with the non-resistance. So this is what you want to be doing this weekend, right? You want to be finding a state of non-resistance to facilitate the masculine's energy and moving forward and making a move basically making a move. Aries, that's what Aries is all about. If you could like put a label on Aries, it's something fundamental, making a move, acting, taking action, moving forward, right? Harnessing ego, moving forward, moving into <laughs> momentum, um, action. Again, it's like, that's what Aries is all about, right? So um, what they're saying is, um, You've got to find a point of no resistance, as much no resistance as you can. So this is what all the comfort is about in your physical self, so that you can relax fully. Not like think you're relaxed, because like, oh, well, I'm not doing anything, but I know well, that's got to be done on Monday, and well, let me just, let me just make a to-do list now, in case I can't forget what to do on Monday. No. Put away your to-do list. I've got one there. <laughs> and... Um, let go of it all, right, no self-judgment on that, and um, relax, and you want to relinquish, so you're relinquishing everything, so it's like, ah, oh. so baths, massages, uh, uh, you know, if you do it self-massage, because I wouldn't say see anyone this weekend, I wouldn't say invite anyone around, because it can be quite stressful if you have to do that, and um, find as many points of relaxation as you can, meditate, and in the meditation you're looking at, you're looking for complete relaxation, and a state of no resistance. Um, know that as well, when the masculine shifting, ascension symptoms appear to get wor worse. 
So, um, and the reason that ascension symptoms appear to get worse is actually a positive reason behind that because it means it's telling you to take time out. So your migraines, your sinus problems, your uh, what appear to be inflexible limbs or aches in the limbs, that kind of stuff, it's all telling you to take time out. So follow the advice that you're getting through your ascension symptoms and rest, right? Even things that appear on the body, you know, like eczema and stuff, flare-ups, it's so that you don't go out of the house and get seen by anybody. It's telling you to stay indoors and like, concentrate on your own relaxation. And the resistance, lowering the resistance by meditating, sleeping, napping, uh, state of no mind is going to also alleviate your ascension symptoms and you can do that in little as three seconds by meditating and you'll notice the pain if you just focus on letting go of the pain and um, um, by relaxing into it you see it's not about running away from the pain and saying I don't want this pain I don't want this pain I don't want this anymore it hurts it hurts it's about saying how does it feel? How does it feel? I can feel it. Oh, I can feel it now. Mm, I can feel it now. How does it feel now? How does it feel now? And it start, as you go towards it and into it, it'll start to diminish because you're relaxing into it, right? So that's how you alleviate these symptoms by going towards them and into them and becoming one with them, right? And as you become one with them and your vibration rises in relation to them, they diminish in relation to your vibration. So, um, and that can happen in lit as little as three minutes, right? I've tried, I just did that this morning, I did that. And my sinus issues um, that were really bad yesterday have completely gone. Uh, so, the other thing is state of flow in anything you do. So, um, whenever you are doing anything, and this is, you know, we're not talking about the big things, we're talking about the simple things like making your breakfast or making a cup of tea, do it slowly. Do it slowly and with awareness of every single thing that you're doing in relation to that and be in a state of flow with it and be in a state of non-resistance with it. So it's not about, you know, you put in your um, coffee in your mug and you spill a little bit and you're like, oh my God, I spilled that coffee. There's no resistance. Like irritation is a form of resistance. So, And if you're in a state of flow and if you're just like noticing what's going on, uh, be aware of, of, of you know, how uh, you want to just be in this fluid flow-like um, movement with everything that you do and uh, not allowing yourself to basically be triggered into irritation by petty, inconsequential things. And that is everything, right? Everything is petty and inconsequential. So, because <laughs> it's all third-dimensional. What is vibration? Vibration is your energetic response to your third dimensional um, experience, right? So your state of flow is a meditative state that is non-resistive in relation to everything that you do in the physical world and everything that comes towards you in the physical world, right? So when you're driving down the street and someone cuts in front of you, you want to just not, you know, find a state of no resistance around it, right? So because that thing that's coming towards you is coming in relation to your vibration, so if you can, you know, be in awareness of that, lessen your resistance, those things will stop happening and you start to move through life in a state of more flow um, in response to your state of flow. So it's all leading to less resistance. So it's that as well. And what else is the uh, churning around thoughts, right? So taking out time to be on your own and relax and release resistance. Um, the ego, which is a, your mind, which is the part of you that's always got a uh, negative viewpoint will always try and harness you and make you play the game and the game is always about rehashing regurgitating chewing over revisiting history and um, what was right or wrong about that history so it's always judgment involved in the ego and we could be looking at the most minorest things like um, what you liked about the meal you had yesterday or what you didn't like about it, um, which is still ego, even if you're doing that, um, because you'll notice when you do it, right, when you start to even have a question like that, you start to try and answer it within yourself, you come into conflict. 
so you create resistance even if it's something as simple as that I don't like I didn't like those potatoes I had yesterday I thought they were a bit mm, on the hard side and I thought they were a bit uh, gooey and uh, you'll notice just your forehead starts to furrow your brow starts to furrow your t shoulders start to tense up the back of your neck starts to tense up you go into resistance so you've got to know that this resistance is available in everything or not available in everything depending on how you choose to exist right so do not revisit the past and do not try to rehash the past and make sense of the past because the, it's going to take you into resistance always 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 right and if you do find yourself revisiting the past in some sense or in some kind of judgment conversation as soon as you start to love the past you go into no resistance and you're only actively allowing the past to evaporate and disintegrate so if you it's like take that meal example thing if you were started to instead of focusing on the potatoes that you didn't like that were too hard you're looking at say the um uh, the the broccoli that you had that was cooked to perfection and uh, had slices of garlic in it or whatever and that was you know uh, re really really tasty and really juicy and you start to focus on that you find yourself sinking into what is relaxation what is a point of no resistance right and you start to feel yourself feeling the comfort again and then it just goes because there's nothing there to hold you in a state of non-resistance uh, sorry, a state of resistance around what's happened in the past because it's like, yeah, that's all fine then I'll just move on from that <laughs> right, so um, so that's how it can come up so it's like everything, right so it's about vigilance around, we've got willpower, right willpower is the ego as well but it, the willpower is an energetic state right, so it's like use your willpower to be vigilant around what your ego is trying to make you do in terms of judgment within yourself, which is only going to harness more resistance within you, right? If you're relaxing on the sofa this weekend and you've got a movie on and you don't like the movie, don't continue watching the movie and making complaints about it. Turn it off and put another one on instead. And do that as many times as it takes so you find something you can relax into and find comfort in. If you can't, then just don't. Maybe read a book instead or daydream or whatever, you know. Um get the game out <laughs> I had to put the GTA away yesterday because it was causing resistance because I couldn't complete one of the missions so <laughs> but you know if it makes you happy do it basically um what else um so that's it it's like basic you know minor this point as well like uh, even ch like uh, considering a meal you had the day before but in a greater sense as well um and one that needs to be you come in awareness of uh, in this growth process, that it's a twin flame process, it's a re, um, the, the moving into a state of non-resistance around all fear, basically. Um, and you're facilitating that, it's facilitating the masculine energy moving out of a state of fear as well into their truth, their connection to source, which is ultimately a connection to you because the two are connected through source, which is an energetic vibration, which is source. So, um, basically... Oh, uh, what am I on about? Oh yes, so you uh, you know what comes up as well in the energy field in terms of the ego is ridiculous. I mean, I have to say, it's utterly ridiculous. I was got up this morning in a perfect state of harmony, and suddenly, from out of nowhere, I was found myself chomping on an old memory. That must have been something from when I was around seven years old. <laughs> uh, I can't even remember who it was in relation to. Somebody who had done me wrong, you know. <laughs> and I caught myself halfway through having a good old chew on this old memory of this incident in the playground and justifying to myself, uh, you know, how this was how this was not right that they'd said this to me or done this to me or whatever and I was like and I caught myself and I was like oh my god just stop it just stop it just let it go this is resistance so you've got to know that anything that comes up in the form of an old memory that leads you to chew on a sense of injustice or find yourself um, again stating your worth has to be let go of it has to be let go of now you know, full self-worth is not about repeatedly stating a sense of worth to a person for you or no, 
for all you know, might be dead by now, might have transformed. <laughs> and um, it's not relevant anymore, right? It's not relevant anymore. So it's disharmony and it is resistance. As soon as you start having that thought, let yourself go towards it and you know repeat your intentions in the case of that it's not doing anything for the masculine energy moving forward out of state no resistance because you're creating resistance um so just let go let go come into awareness of it like i said at the beginning right all these portals we go through are about shifting us into awareness and moving us out of fear and like i said at the beginning you can you can become aware of your codependency and as soon as you do you're like, well, I don't want to be codependent anymore. I, that's not why, I, you know, no. And so how do I, how do I uh, not be codependent, basically? So you start to move into better behaviours around how you relate. And you start to see it come up in you. And when it comes up, you stop it, right? Your codependence. Uh, you take every means that you need to do to understand what it is. So that you can shift out of it, right? There's a say, there's a, you know, there's, um, this work that is involved in shifting your vibration it's the rules are all right you know everything that's out there in relation to manifesting through vibration is is all truth but the problem that human beings have is that they cannot shift out of what is not necessary to achieve the vibration because they continue to avoid the um the work that's involved in understanding what it is that's not allowing them to get into that pure vibration right so um this is work from a long time ago i'm sure it's worked for all of you a long time ago but i'm just stating that you know you had to come into awareness what of what codependency was before you could understand that you were and then shift out of it right and now you need to come into understanding around what is resistance within the vibration and to acknowledge that when it's coming towards you because everything that comes through your mind, it's like you're on a road and it's coming towards you, right? And when you're in a state of meditation, a state of flow, and a state of no mind and complete relaxation in your physical body, and therefore your vibration is an optimum vibration of no resistance, there are no thoughts in your head at all. Right? No thoughts at all. And what is replacing the thoughts is pure happiness and joy. And this is, yeah, it might gender engender a thought, but it's more of a thought of, say, like, um, what lovely snack can I have now, right? Or um, what's that cat doing in my garden? Let me go out and have a chat to it, right? Something that's going to bring you more happiness, something that's going to bring you more state of um, joyousness and release. It's like being five years old again, going back to your inner child, but in an unharmed state, right? So not that person that was in the playground that got um, tormented by whatever, whoever it was that you're trying to regurgitate in your mind. It's letting that go and it's becoming the child again and the child that just enjoys the childish things like talking to the animals, right? The joyous things, the wonder of life, the wonder of being, the wonder of existing in the physical world and it all being new and it all being exciting and it all being joyous and it all being wonderful, right? And letting go of the rest of the shit that's, that became who you were right that's the you that constantly looks back at becoming that because once you become that and you're out of the fear there is no need to look back at that anymore you have become one eleven you have become the fearless one right so um so notice these things when they come into your head right and move into resistance around them and go and do something more fun and joyous that rather than have that thought, right? And uh, I think that's it really. So that's really the big one. It's that was it's those resistant thoughts. It's the self harming. You've got to see them as self harm. You're harming yourself with those thoughts, right? It's like you're beating yourself up constantly with those thoughts of um, reminding yourself of when you were wounded, right? When you were when you felt unworthy when you weren't able to answer back or stick up for yourself. In any situation, it could be five years old, it could be 20 years old. It could be with whoever, you know. And this all starts this process with the other one that you're connected to and in relation to them. 
So, but this, that disintegrates, right? But then the mind is still trying to harness what else has wounded you. What else can you attack again? What else can you justify again? What else can you come to the same conclusion of again? Oh, the conclusion is you're worthy. Okay. Then you don't need to do it anymore, do you? And in relation to the one that you've connected to, to move out of thoughts around that person in, in that regard of resistant thoughts, hopefully it's happened by now. If not, then use this portal to become aware of that and exit that program of resistance around that person. Because if you can know ultimately there's an energetic connection taking you away from fear, you can understand that any interaction in the third dimension was organised to bring you into an understanding and an energetic release of the fear. So it's all necessary for what it was, right? So it's just like instead of you would focus on a negative thought when you look at the meal yesterday, you would focus on a positive thought when you would look at the twin yesterday, right? You would focus on a positive thought about them. So that instance when they came around your um, your house and they said something to you that was not your truth, right? Don't focus on that. Instead, focus on the fact that they gave you a really nice hug, right? And it felt wonderful to be close to them. If you're going to focus, on, if you're going to allow that at all, right? And let go of the rest. It's like you're harnessing only the good things and you're letting go of the shit in everything and that you have experienced. Because you've got to remember as well, it's all for that reason, to make you do that. This is when you've got to do it, if you haven't done it already. And this is why you need to take the time out. Can you see how important it is to take the time out to focus on this process of releasing resistance against what you want? Because this is now, to do this now, so that come this Aries full moon that's coming, the masculine energy is cleared of their resistance to move forward, basically. And you know, I don't talk about these things like this, but this is what's actually happening now. <laughs> so um, it does, you know, it, I can't resist this anymore to talk about this because it's actually happening. So um, they are going to move forward, but your, resist your state of non-resistance is, is required to allow them to move forward. See, allowance, you're allowing by your state of non-resistance, your energetic state of non-resistance for them to make take action. That's how it works. All right, so I think that's it really. I might just pull a few cards. I don't need the cards anymore. They told me I don't need the cards. Um, as obviously you could tell because I just didn't use any cards. <laughs> but um, see, I shifted out of the cards, but I like the cards. I've got them here, so. Um, actually, I have to say, I do feel myself now going into a state of resistance, so I'm going to have to put them away, which is quite incredible. So I'm not allowed to use those cards, no. Um, they're not my program anymore. I've exited that program. So um, what am I talking about then? That's it. So have a joyous weekend. Find joy. Find happiness. Um, not from anything particularly either, you know, just from being, being, from existing from existing in the third dimension. So it's finding joy in the small things, nature, basically, because that's all there is, really, or things that you've created that you can look around and see. Oh, I was going to talk about this. Um, the one last thing, right, is the um, when I said that you don't have to do things to make things better, like this house that I'm living in. So uh, when I moved into this house, it was um, practically falling down. I'd been told it was falling down, actually, um, and that I shouldn't buy it. But I knew I had to buy it, and um, I knew it would be all right. And as I started to um, put this house back together, and yeah, I have had things done in the house, with things that had to be done. I had builders in to do some things. Um, and I've done a lot of decorating, and I've done a lot of creating. But there's other things in this house that are repairing themselves of their own accord as I live here and create a better vibration in this house. So there was a damp wall that I have done nothing to that is no longer damp. And there was horrible smell coming from that wall as well. And there's no smell coming from that wall anymore. And it's just gone. And all my guys, when I asked my guides what to do about that wall, because I was thinking maybe I need to get the wall taken down, maybe I should get someone in, and then I said, oh God, if I get that wall taken down, that's going to mean taking down the whole house, back of the house practically. They were like, no, 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 no. 
<laughs> no, 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 just leave it, paint it, be happy, be happy, be happy, and the wall will take care of itself. And I've been literally happy in this house and getting happier and happier and happier and releasing more and more and more resistance out of my vibration and letting things go and letting things go and letting things go and then finding out and being told by my guides that's why you came here you came here to let go letting go was an actual purpose right of my life to let go of everything that I am witnessing in the third dimension and everything within me that is unhappiness that is that resistance that is negativity that's what's my actual it's part of your life purpose right so if it's my life purpose it's your life purpose that's why I'm saying this thing at the weekend is important it's not like oh I can't take time off work my work's really important no this is important <laughs> this is important because this is your work your work of letting go is your work it's why you've incarnated so and after this comes even more better things bigger things more amazing things that you'll manifest into your life that will be more profound and that you can even imagine after this comes the houses the cars the lifestyle the place to live uh in union with your twin where you're both living in harmony in the physical dimension right so it's very important work um so just to get back to the house basically so it's the non-resistance is fixing the house Right, because everything in the third dimension responds to a state of non-resistance and letting go. So that's why you don't need to do anything, right? But let go. And predominantly, for those who haven't already, the churning around of the negative thoughts and the history that was you, right? Because you are not that history. You are what you create in every moment. And what you create in every moment has to be a non-resistant vibration of happiness and joy for you to have what comes from a non-resistant vibration of happiness and joy. See what I mean? So it's like go outside, find a leaf and look at the leaf, right? And see the miracle of the leaf and know that that is, that is the, the, about the profoundest thing that you can see, right? In this physical world, right? Do you see what I mean? It's like um, harmony, happiness non-resistance all right i'm going that's it i need a lot of snacks <laughs> i just went out to the shops and stocked up myself um on snacks and lovely foods and i'm gonna go live watch a movie perhaps if i don't like the movie i'm gonna turn it off and daydream and that's it really this weekend all right lots of love bye